Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Everything Business. As was promised, right, I am going to be doing a past paper question, right? This is 2019 paper, right? And um, let's get right into it. All right. Now, as you know, there are five sections that CXC will be testing this year. Sections one, two, um, five, seven, and nine. Right. So I'll be pointing out as I go through this paper, I'll be pointing out those sections that you need to pay attention to. All right. And questions that you just may see something similar to that um, this, year, this year. So let's start. Right. So question one, question one A, it asks, it asks us to define the term stakeholder as it relates to a business. Right. So a stakeholder is any person that has an interest in the business right for example customers and i give an example there right the next question asks us to identify um two stakeholders who are involved in a business right so two stakeholders who are involved in a business are your customers and your owners you could have had um suppliers you could have had employees all of these people you could have had um as stakeholders as well because they are stakeholders then, right, the question went on to ask um, to outline one function of each of the stakeholders identified. So we're going to be talking about the customer and the owners because those are the ones that I identified. So the customers will be the ones to purchase goods and services so that the business can be profitable. The owners are expected to invest capital and organize the factors of production so that the business can be profitable as well all right so moving on now to one question one c it says describe one activity that may be carried out in each of the following functional areas of a business now if you remember functional areas we have five functional areas of a business so in in in, in, in some other places they would say departments right but it's really the functional areas of a business and they gave us the functional areas. This is section two, by the way, guys. So this is section two. This part here is section two. So you may want to pay attention to it because it is also one of those sections that will be tested this year. So marketing. So the marketing department is responsible for promoting the, the product. And that's just one activity, right? I could have said various other activities. So the marketing department is also responsible to, to do market research, right? To design the product. Right, I could have said all of that, right? But they only asked for one. Finance, the finance department prepares the financial statements for the business, such as the income statement and the statement of financial position. Then we have the personnel or the human resource um, department. And this department is responsible for hiring employees or workers and also training workers. And this department, um, it, 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 it overall, right, looks at the welfare of workers the welfare of workers, right? And so um, it, it it also deals with, um, you know, like maternity leave, um, you know, sick leave, all of these things it, it, it um, deals with as well. So I didn't even have to say hiring and training, right? It also deals with disciplining employees and stuff like that. Anything that is relating to employees, right? Then the human resource department is responsible. Explain two legal or ethical, next question, explain two legal or ethical principles that business owners should adopt in the establishment of, and operation, sorry, of a business. And in your explanation, include relevant examples of such principle. So the first thing, some businesses need a license to sell certain products such as food or health products, right? Or even cosmetics products, right? Therefore, businesses should get the required licenses before they begin operations. Right, I know in Jamaica, especially if you're going to sell alcohol or liquor, right, alcoholic beverages, you definitely need a license for that. Right. Um, the second point is business, right, should be registered and pay their taxes, thus contributing to nation building. There are a lot of taxes that are levied at businesses, and all of these taxes should be paid. Right. So you know, even your even indirect taxes like custom duties and all of these things, right, need to be need to be paid. All right. You can just expound on that a little bit more. 
Then question two states that well, we should what? State two functions of management in a business organization. Uh, we know functions of management. We have eight functions of management, right? Um, but they only ask for two. So we give them planning and organizing. Again, this is section two, guys, right? Section two information. So chances are you may see some of these questions come back. All right. Then they ask us to describe the two functions that we just gave. So planning involves looking ahead, making decisions and formulating policies on the intentions and objectives of the organization. And then organizing is really ensuring that workers can get on with their job by making sure that people, machinery and materials are available at the right place and at the right time. All right, so that's organizing. So we're going through nicely, all right? So question 2B. State two responsibilities of management to each of the following groups. So how is management responsible to employees and to the government? Also, section two, right? Guys, pay attention, right? So to employees, so they ask for two responsibilities, but I gave three for each, all right? So management is responsible to provide the safest and most comfortable working conditions for their employees. Uh, management is, uh, should also pay their employees a fair wage. They should also provide resources, um, provide the necessary resources um, to get the job done. So you can't have people working in the business that you don't give them the tools to do their job. They will not be productive, right? Management is responsible to the government, right? In that they should abide by the various laws of the land, right? They should pay their taxes. They should register their businesses, right? Question 2C ask us to define the term teamwork. Teamwork is basically working together to achieve a common goal. Right, and then it asks for one advantage and one disadvantage of teamwork within the organization. Now, an advantage of teamwork is that the work is completed at a faster rate, right, than if one person was doing the job, right? Because you have more persons doing the job, it's going to be faster. So, therefore, efficiency is increased. The disadvantage, is, the disadvantage though, or one disadvantage though, of teamwork is that it can cause conflicts, right, as um, as as opinions will differ. You get what I'm saying? Because you have different persons, they said three different persons, three different minds, right? So that can cause conflicts. And if one person is tardy or even lazy or makes a mistake, then it can affect the entire team because it's what? It's a, it's a team effort, all right? All right, so we're moving on fine, all right? So this question says that um, for some time now, there has been a breakdown in communication between the managers and employees of ABC Plastic Company Limited explain two strategies that management of that the management of abc plastic um company limited could implement to improve communication within the organization right so this is basically asking you or testing your knowledge on communication right now you can follow up verbal communication with written communication a lot of times when people say things right people forget but if you follow it up with a letter a written communication or an email right then people will remember it because written communication is more permanent. The second point, um, which could be the first point, right, is that the use of technology, or use technology rather, in the communication process, or, or in communication, right? For example, you can have a WhatsApp group, you can create emails and email blasts, right? Um, you can have Zoom meetings, all of these things can improve um, communication. All right, moving on, question three. Now, question three, I want you to realize that it's talking about what? Production, which is section five, right? Um, so it asks us to define the term production and section five is going to be tested, guys. So just pay attention. So production is the creation of goods and services that is capable of satisfying human needs and wants. That's too much. You don't need to write any long thing. It's just a definition. Then it asks us to identify two factors of production other than capital um, used in the manufacture of goods and provision of services. So you can just identify two factors of production, which is land and labor, right? We have four factors of production and they said that we should not use capital. So it's either land, labor, or entrepreneurial ability, or some textbooks will say enterprise. Oh, by, uh, oh guys, and by the way, I do mark for CXC. So I can give you um, a little tip on how to answer the questions, all right? So I want you to pay attention to how I answer the questions. It will help you to gain marks in the exam as well, all right? So next question asks us to define the term capital. Now, capital is really the investments that are made in a business venture, usually thought of as money, 
right um that is used to start the business but capital is much more than money it's really all any asset that you invest in your business anything that you invest in a business right can be considered as capital that you use to generate um additional income um then the question move on question what is this now 3b2 it asks us to differentiate between fixed and working capital and give examples so fixed capital are the fixed assets invested in the business to generate income um, I did not give the example here, right? But an example of a fixed asset is like a machinery, right? Machinery, um, 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 stuff like that, right? The plant, all these things are fixed asset, fixed, um, fixed capital, right? Now, while working capital are the more liquid assets, like current assets, that will not remain in the business for a long time. Fixed assets will stay in the business for a long period of time um, to generate income while current assets um are working working capital will not remain in the business for such a long time for example stock the stock is the unsold goods for your plan to sell then we look at 3c it asks us to outline one benefit of the growth of a company to each of the following groups so then this question is basically asking you when a company grows right what will happen how will it impact or benefit customers and the shareholders again this is section five production right so uh for the customers as a company grows it could experience economies of scale and economies of scale is a term that you need to know right if you are going to be talking about production and in section five economies of scale is really the advantages of large scale production and what really happens when you have economies of scale is that you are able to produce more it means that productivity increase so you are able to produce more for less so you can produce more goods um while your cost your production cost will be low and what that can do is it will cause you then to sell your products at a lower cost because a lower price because your your your, your production cost will be lower so you can then sell your products at a lower price and that is how it benefit um customers shareholders more profits can be made um for shareholders i mean let's face it shareholders are the persons who are investing their money and if you are being uh, if the business is growing it means that you're making more money right and then investors will get a greater return on their investments all right the next question asks us to explain two ways in which um ways in which increased productivity may be advantageous to a business as i was saying earlier productivity um, is really the output per man hour it is the amount of work that you are able to do within a given time and they love to ask that question they love to ask about productivity so ensure that you know um, the difference between production and productivity pay attention to that so production is the creation of goods and services that are capable of satisfying human needs and wants right while productivity right is the output per man hour or you can say the amount of work um a person can do in a given time you, you have to stress that guys all right so this question that double just a sidebar but this question now is asking us to talk about um how productivity and increase in productivity can be advantageous to a business what that means is that the business is producing more yeah the business is producing more so they're asking how um how does the fact that you can produce more in less time be beneficial to the business? So increased productivity can lead to surplus of goods, right? And then these surplus of goods can be exported and that can yield greater profits, right? The second point that I have here is that um, increased productivity will lower overall production cost, which is what I just explained, economies of scale. And then the firm can then lower their prices and what that will do, it it will increase sales because customers will, you know, would gravitate to the product. And, and ultimately, if it increases sales, then it will ultimately increase um, profits. All right. So, so that's, that's, that's um, important. All right. I want you to pay attention to how I answer the question and I want you to look at how I link things. So if I said if price is lower, sales will increase and then what will happen from that? profits may increase so i link my responses or i link my points all right let's go to the next question right now all right so let's look at question number four 
right it it states that we should outline two functions of consumer organizations right two functions of consumer organizations right so consumer organizations right they are responsible to what protect consumers from unfair business practices right they are also responsible to educate consumer about their rights right um the next question says that we should outline two benefits of good customer service right so one customer loyalty right and that means that the customer will keep coming back if you provide good customer service you're going to be keeping um keeping on coming back then you have improved reputation right and then with the improved reputation it can increase sales and then that can ultimately cause profits to also increase question 4c right it asks us to describe each of the following forms of customer service warranty so a warranty is a written guarantee given to customer or given to a customer when an item is purchased um, promising to repair or replace the item if necessary within a specified period of time then you have toll free numbers or toll free call centers right toll free numbers or telephone numbers you know that when it is dialed from a landline right it is free of cost to the caller so it means that customers can call um free of cost right so it will improve communication between customers and the business right then we have suggestion boxes right suggestion boxes are boxes um that are used to collect feedback from customers on how to improve the service right yeah so that's what a suggestion box is next question 4d it says a trademark is a firm's brand that allows it certain benefits in the marketplace so you need to know what a brand is right off the bat so a brand is really the name that is given to a product right um the trademark right sometimes the the trademark will be the brand itself the name right but the question is asking us to explain two ways in which trademarks are beneficial in the conduct of a business right so one it helps customers identify your product it helps customers differentiate your product from other products right and two it prevents other businesses from copying your product and this would therefore protect your brand you know um and your product right so that's important right it's talking about like um intellectual property um copywriting and patent and all of these things all right the last question question five asks asks us to de define the term information and communication technology ict and that is where um you know the world is moving now ict so right basically ict is the infrastructures that are involved in modern day communications it includes all communication devices so from your telephone to your radio to your tv to your internet all of these things are um a part of ict describe one way in which computer aided design right cad is used in businesses computer aided design it simply means you are doing something but the computer is helping you to do it right yeah so that's what it means basically that's why it says computer aided aid which means help right design so you know the computer is helping you to design something right um so yeah cad can be used to do flyers posters design labels for products Right, I, I they only asked for one way, and I gave it three ways right off the bat. All right. So this one, this question five C is asking us to outline three ways in which the use of automatic teller machines or ATMs or automated banking machines (ABM) could assist um, a business. Right, and it is a trend where you find businesses now are putting ATM machines in their in their establishment you know it's it's something that that is, is is catching on right and these are the benefits these are the reasons right um so one it makes it easier for customers to make payments right um you know so you know customers can just go withdraw money make the payment two it increases sales thus increase revenue right it will bring customers to your business you know because customers want to use the atm so they will come they will you know use the atm and then obviously they may see products that they will like 
and then you know they will they have the cash they will just probably buy right so it can increase sales right and then increase revenue and the third thing is that you know um it will encourage customers to use cash instead of using checks and you know that this one disadvantage is one disadvantage of checks is that they can be dishonored or they can bounce right um and so um yeah it encourages customers to use cash instead of um checks all right so the next question 5d it states outline two ways in which um electronic commerce e-commerce can improve the performance of a business and in this covid time this question may may just come back right because people have to be using a lot of electronic means to do business so e-commerce is booming right now so one way how it benefit business is that it increase customer base right so with e-commerce you have customers all over the country and even the world right and the second way it benefit business is that it increase sales and revenue which will ultimately increase um profits it can even cause businesses to diversify their products diversify their their offerings and what that means is they are providing additional products right um to to customers and then they can capture a new customer base so say for example i am i am in the business of selling um you know say selling food right and because of 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 e-commerce right because of e-commerce i can even branch off and start doing delivery now and all these things right so i diversify my offerings all right and then the last part of it the last part of question five it says explain two ways in which businesses can demonstrate the ethical use of information communication technology in the conduct of their operations right and so one of the ways right is to ensure that customers private information is kept confidential right these are information such as what names addresses of customers banking information that customers may have used maybe in online and stuff like that you want to ensure that these things are kept confidential and private and people and not any anybody have access to it and it leads into the second point to ensure that employees do not spy right on clients by using details gathered through the use of um the same um information communication technology all right so basically that is 2019 paper right and you would have gotten your 100 marks because this paper is marked out of 100 All right, so I'll catch you in my next video. I hope to do another another paper soon. I think I want to do 2017 paper, right? Catch you soon. Well, good. Mm -hmm.